Good morning, everyone. Greetings to my family, friends, and loved ones. I'm going to ask that you bear with me because this is my first time officiating a service for one of my personal birthdays. I'm going to ask that you bear with me. I'm going to open the ceremony by quoting a song that I know that Cameron loved because I've seen him dance to it a million times. There are times when I look above and beyond. There are times when I feel your love around me, baby. I'll never forget you, my baby. There are times when I look above and beyond. There are times when I feel your love all around me, baby. I'll never forget you, my baby. When I feel that I don't belong, draw my strength from the words when you said, hey, it's about you, baby. Look deeper inside you, baby. I dream about us together again. What I want us is together again, baby. I know we'll be together again, cuz. Everywhere I go, every smile I see, I know you are there smiling back at me. Dancing in the moonlight, I know you are free because I can see your star shining down on me. Welcome to the homegoing celebration of a guy known by many names. We'll start with the name that his wonderful parents named him. Guy Cameron Athens. Known to the dance community as Cameron Kyojin Chibi Atkins. I'm also going to quote a few things because I know that Cameron was a man of many beliefs, many faiths, and had a respect for many school of thoughts. I also know that he had a love for Zora Neale Hurston. In a quote from her book, Their Eyes Were Watching God, no hour is ever of eternity, but it has its right to be.
call out and you'll hear me. Be happy. It's a dance song by Shanae. I open this ceremony asking that you all open your hearts and your minds to receive the messages of those that come forward to celebrate Cameron in all the different ways that we knew and loved him. Honors to his parents, his wife, and his children. <coughs> If you have a premium program, you can follow along. We will now enter in the prayer of family and friends. from the prayer, from family and friends, but in that space, I'll add this. There's a book called The Spirit of Intimacy by Sabrina Fusome. It's a book that I'm currently reading in. Within this particular chapter, I saw something that reminded me of something that he in me and his wife, Denise, was talking about over the phone. In that book it says, the family in Africa is always extended. You would never refer to your cousin as cousin because that would be an insult. So your cousins are your sisters and brothers, your nieces are your children, your uncles are your fathers, your aunts are your mothers, your sister's husband is your husband, and your brother's wife is your wife, and you treat them as such. Children are also encouraged to call other people outside the family, mother, fathers, sisters and brothers. I don't think I ever saw Cameron encounter someone that he did not consider family. I never saw him treat anyone with a cross word. I actually don't even think that I've ever heard him curse, to be honest. Some of y'all may know different. Maybe he did curse, but I never saw that. I never saw him have a cross word for anyone. He always treated everyone like he was his blood. I would run into him in the store. He would greet my children with the spirit of a father. He's been a, a parent for a little bit longer than I have been, so his children are a little bit older than mine. But he always greeted my children, even my grown children, with the spirit of a father. And that just goes to show the type of character that Cameron was, of love and familiar grace. Moving forward, I would like to call a family friend of Fort Point. I understand it's of um, Japanese language, which is also a culture that he was very, very fond of, so we want to respect and honor that as well. Is Sachiko here? Hi, my name is Chigo. I'm a friend of Cameron's. He call, sometimes call me Sachiko Sensei because I was a, his Japanese teacher as well. I met him through the house music community here 
But as we got to know each other, we got closer due to the fact that I'm from Japan, but also he loved to learn the Japanese language and culture. So Denise asked me to translate this beautiful poem. Also honored, I do believe that Cameron, Cameron's in Japanese is good enough to understand this poem in Japanese. And then again, I'm very honored to read this poem in Japanese to him and to Denise um, for his memorial service.私の墓の前で涙を流さないでください。私はそこにはいません。私は眠りません。私は線の風に吹かれ、出差し雨となります。緑の畑となります。朝の静けさの中。舞と美しい鳥の夕が流れの中にいることでしょう。私は夜に輝く星となります。咲き誇る花の中にいます。静寂の部屋にいます。歌をさえずる鳥の中にいます。美しいすべてのものの中にいます。どうぞ。私の墓の前で泣かないでください。私はそこにはいません。私は死にません。Thank you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If for it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also and you know the way to where I'm going. John 14, 1 through 4. I invite anyone who has some reflection or beautiful story you would like to share about camera with this family. Good morning. I am the best friend of Mr. Cameron's daughter in law, and I just I had something to say to him and to everyone. Life is a precious gift we all must cherish. Each soul brought to this world has a purpose, and once it is filled, eventually has an end, followed with a new spiritual beginning. 
Our physical journeys aren't meant to last forever, but in this life, when we cross paths with others, we must leave an endless impression, and that's what Pops did every day. He was here on this earth, effortlessly. Even now in this moment, his kindness, generosity, and gentle heart exuded with ease from the tone of his voice, the warmth in his eyes, and the tender, tenderness of his big hugs. His compassion was a force to be reckoned with. Any creature had meaning when in his presence. His connection to this earth was otherworldly. To be in his presence was a gift in itself. To not have him here physically is disheartening, but he sends strength in the end to all of us. I wish there was more time. I wish I could have thanked him more, told him how much I love and appreciate him for being a part of creating one of the best humans in my life and giving me a sister I never knew I needed. It's hard to say goodbye, so I won't. But I will say until we meet again, whenever that happens. So sorry. I have so many beautiful memories to share with you and so much thanks to give. May you forever rest in blissfulness, Pops. Thank you so much for every waking moment of your precious time here on this earth. I am forever grateful for the wondrous life you lived and share with us all unapologetically. I love you forever. Thank you. Hey everyone. Um, they call me Kimiko. I've known Cameron for a very long time, like over 25 years. And um, I was in and out of his life because we both were free spirits. <laughs> and we just always do a lot of awesome and amazing things. But one thing that I can say that he's done a lot for me, and I'm sure he's done a lot for all of you, is for me, he's always been kind of sensitive. <laughs> he's always been the kind to say, I love you. When you guys were going through, or when I was going through something, he'll jump up and frantically be like, oh my God, are you okay? Oh my God. <laughs> and sometimes with me, I'm always like that tough girl. I'm like, nah, you know, I'm all right, all right. But then he'll come at me and he's like, Kim, I love you. I love you. You know I love you. And every time we're in a fleeting moment between train stations or conversations of in text, he always tell you, and I'm sure he does <coughs> tell it to you guys too. He's like, you know I love you, right? And because of that, I just, I really feel it. Um, it saddens my heart, but at the same time, knowing the kind of person he is, he wants everybody to still feel love no matter what. And so, you know, I'm gonna say this to you guys. I don't know you guys, but I love you. Actually, uh, on Facebook, uh, we would have conversations about anime, and he would just laugh at me, just cutting the fool sometimes. And he he had like so much compassion, and uh, he really he really cared when his friends were hurting or when they weren't feeling their best. Um, and working with him at MJQ, he, you know, his, it would rub off on you, the, the compassion and everything, like, it actually helped me, you know, 
with my temper being a better person because he would shrug out something like, oh man, don't, don't, don't worry about that, man. Or, you know, when you're going through something, talk to me about it. And I would play games with him on, on Switch. And he, he loved gaming. Um, and when he first found out that I liked anime, this cat gave me a thumb drive with all the anime on it. Like, it's, <laughs> so, and he's like, did you watch it? Did you watch it yet? I was just like, yeah, I, I watched it. And um, he loved playing um, Super Smash Brothers. He loved playing that game. He, like, you gotta get Smash, bro. You gotta get something to play, man. I'm just like, but, um, man, I, I, I love him a lot. I'm gonna miss him. But I, I swear, like, when I see the, 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 the dance circle, the MJQ, or I see everybody grooving, and I, like, you, you can feel this presence there. Like, that's a presence that you don't just, it stays with you, you know what I'm saying? So, to the family, uh, wonderful brother, and Denise, like, I love, I love y'all, and, and thank y'all, man, for, for, for Cam, and thank you for the opportunity to be able to talk to y'all about him. Thank you. community, um, like Bookhouse MJQ, that group. Um, and a few years ago, my husband and I had a really big dream. Um, we, we wanted to move out to Japan. And I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> um, and he was kind of our biggest cheerleader. Um, I, uh, I can be a little forgetful sometimes that I would slack in my studies and he would just always, you know, stay on me. And, you know, remind me, you know, you gotta be dedicated to it. You really want this, you gotta work for it. Um, and, you know, he would kind of just gently in a friendly way, like tease me about it if I kind of slid behind. Um, we were friends on Duolingo and so he could see if I had a street going and stuff. Um, so, <laughs> um, and when we moved over there, you know, when you, when you go away, first couple weeks, couple months, uh, you know, you hear from everybody wanting to hear about what's going on and how you're doing and stuff, but, it tapers off, you know, because people get busy and, you know, life happens. But I heard from Cameron all the time. He wanted to know every little thing, every last detail. He would ask about, you know, our apartment and what was different and, you know, just the whole the whole process. Um, and it just, there, there were a couple of times where I was really lonely and where I was really sad and it was nice to have somebody to talk to that would just kind of remind, you know, remind you, like, that you, and the stuff worth having is, is worth working more and worth kind of pushing through the hard stuff and you know with everything going on we came back home obviously and um you know he was the person that was also just so so encouraging you know he just he's he's a genuinely kind soul and he was the one that told us you know if we if we wanted to go back if we wanted to do it again we always can and you know just i think that we were all really lucky to have somebody that encouraging that that kind, that uplifting, and I'm really grateful that we were able to be able to be part of his part of his friends, part of his circle. Thanks, guys. Everything was Zoom. 
So I didn't get a chance to actually see him either due to the circumstances. Um, he joined my team at the end of August. Um, primarily in order to continue working um, and to be able to work. Because um, my team, the quality team, we didn't have to contact people. We didn't have to do case investigations and, and contact tracing. We were able to work different shifts because our focus was on getting the correct information um, in our Georgia State database. What was so interesting about Cameron, he has such a caring soul. Um, and for my team, to not have been able to have a visual contact with him, he communicated in various different ways. Um, he would text, he would email, and he would share stories about himself. Um, I, had to have, I had the opportunity to talk to him one day because I didn't realize that I hadn't shared with him some of my family's information. And we must have talked over half an hour. <laughs> I told him all about my life, my children, my travels, and we had such a wonderful conversation. But one thing about Cameron, he wanted to do everything perfect. He wanted to get everything right. If he made a mistake, he was really upset about it. And I was always trying to encourage him. It's not about getting it right or getting it perfect. It's about trying. So I just wanted to share with you all it was a privilege knowing him for the short time that I knew him. And he made a lasting impact on our team members. And for various reasons, they couldn't be here. But um, I send you our deepest sympathies from Dr. Khan, from my team, from Sasha. I mean, we just, we will miss him. And I know Denise, we will continue to work together when you do come back. If I can do anything to help, please let me know. My name is uh, Ingai Spaulding, and um, I'm Cameron. I met Cameron way back when I was in high school. First time I met him was at uh, East Point train station. It was the middle of the night, and the first thing he was asking me was where he could find a good place where he could dance. <laughs> and um, I told him, I don't know, but hey, if you find it, let me know. We can hang out. Um, throughout the years, we would hook up disappear, hook up, disappear. Till the recent time we hooked up was I ended up finding out that we lived close to each other. And I got an opportunity to kind of go over and see Denise and Cameron at the house and chill out and um, hang out with Cartman, their dog. And um, one of the things, as much as Cameron, I love him and his kindness, he was ruthless when playing video games. <laughs> He showed no mercy. <laughs> and I remember I would come over every night, we would play, he had this one particular game, God, he would whip my butt. And I swore one day, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna beat him. And one night, I got him, I got him. I royally beat him and he looked at me and it almost made me feel like Yoda looking at a Jedi Knight finally taken. And he's like, well done, well done. <laughs> Then he probably beat me in another game. Um, my last memory of Cameron was seeing him at DragonCon. That's like, that's one thing about I love about this tribe and this family is that no matter how much we're different, there's always something that connects us all. And DragonCon, I got to see him and um, did one thing that I always like to do is any of my friends, especially my big, large friends, because of my size, I like to pick them up. Like literally grab them and pick them up and swing them around because it usually shocks them. And I remember doing that to Cameron. That's one of my favorite memories. He looked at me. I picked him up. He's like, oh my God, you just picked me up. 
And um, yeah. Um, and another thing too is because his love of Japanese culture, um, anime, he was one of my influences of learning how to do kanji, um, Japanese writing, which is the hardest thing, oh my God. But um, I just love his spirit and what he does and how he made me feel and how he made so many other people around him feel. And as much as I'm gonna miss him physically, I know spiritually he's with me and with everyone. And Denise, love you always. Family, I um, love you. And just thank you for allowing us to share. Uh, my name is Dwight David Dunbar. Um, I had the privilege of meeting Cameron back in the 90s. Uh, he was a member of my group we called The Circle. We were a group of video game people, man. Uh, we used to play fight games all the time. And, uh, Cameron started this tradition where it became what was known to us as Friday Night Fights. And uh, every week we would converge on his property and proceed to beat the crap out of each other. You know? <laughs> and pretty much everything under the sun. I mean, um, it started off with fighting games and then it turned into pretty much everything else. Um, he was the type of person that played everything and made sure that you played everything too. He, he um, was a kind soul. In our group, he was probably the, the best of us, um, where a lot of us, we, we had quirks. You know, um, I know me, especially in the beginning, I was that angry, arrogant individual. And uh, he was one of those people that helped me ascend past that. You know, being around him, he, he fed your spirit, whether you realize it or not. You know, um, his demeanor, would become something that a lot of us would aspire to be more like. I'm going to miss him. You know, I remember uh, very clearly <laughs> the last time I had the privilege of uh, clashing skills and wits with him. And we used to do grudge matches where, you know, it was that whole first to ten type of thing. And we, uh, had a grudge match ongoing because we all played with similar characters in certain games. And uh, he took me in that Zangief versus Zangief match, you know? <laughs> it was close, man. It was 9-9, nine, nine, and we were at that. Whoever got the next thing off would win, and, and he took it from me. And uh, I, I will never get to get him back on that, at least not here. But that's OK, because I'm going to see him again. And we're going to do this again. I, I love that man and his family. He was good to this world, and we're all going to miss him. Thank you, Denise, for doing this and giving us the opportunity. I know during this time, it's not easy to get people together because of what's going on in the world. So I really appreciate it. And uh, we're going to stay up. You know, not just running into each other at conventions and stuff like we've been doing for the last couple of years, but we're going to come together real close. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Cameron's younger brother. Um, I guess I represent his youth, who he was before he became the man all of you knew. So, I mean, I, I would have, I don't know, a thousand stories that I could share about our childhood. But to my mother, I'm going to share a couple of details that I'm hoping will lift your spirits. There are things that, I mean, obviously we were two precocious kids, 
You know you gave birth to a genius. He was probably one of the smartest people I've ever known. We probably don't know that we once detached the headphones from a Walkman and used it to eavesdrop on your telephone conversation. <laughs> probably don't know that we took paper towels and balled them up and put them in the bottom of the cookie jar to make it look like it was more full than it was. <laughs> you probably don't know that we hid our vegetables behind the refrigerator. <laughs> so you, you caught us. Um, yeah. So we, I mean, that kind of genius was incredible to behold. That kind of genius was incredible to be in the presence of. That little boy that used to take a, a magnifying glass and use it to burn ants outside. And, and you know, we wouldn't settle for things that didn't involve some kind of intellect. We would play chess. That was the one thing that I was better than it, it, it him. And I, that was the one thing where I could beat my older brilliant brother, which is why I actually became a chess instructor. Um, next to him, I was always just kind of clever, resourceful. But he was, he was the, the path to follow. He was the, the standard to aspire to. He was, he was smart as a whip, like when he, when he started to, to draw, we thought we were gonna start our own comic book company and we would, we would draw for hours at a time, just making up comic book characters. And we would, then he moved on to video games and we had the Atari 2600, we played combat with tanks. Um, then he went and discovered hip hop. And I was there the first time he heard a mixtape. That took him in an incredible direction. Some of you probably don't know Cameron at one time wore a perm. <laughs> probably used to dreadlocks. But yes, my brother had a foot tall, very starched, very stiff head of hair. And of course, I was right there to follow with my is right. Then Cameron moved on to building computers, which is where I got off the ride. Okay, I see you. I, see you. I can't keep up with this. Um, long story short, to you, Mom, there are so many people here that are expressing their appreciation for the person that he was. And that just is a testament to who you are and the mother you are and the mother you were for us. You raised two good young men. There are people here that I have known my entire life. And the same thing goes for Cameron. And that just means that in our lifetime we've been good people. And we owe that to you. So thank you. Good afternoon. Um, Cameron's aunt. And most of you know him as him being a grown man. I knew Cameron from the day he was born. Cameron was the light of our lives. He was my first nephew. And I listened to my nephew talking about how inventive he was. Cameron was determined. When Cameron was smaller, he did not like to comb his hair. 
And I used to babysit. And my sister would tell me, you cannot go outside until he combs his hair. Cameron did not like that. He did not like to get his hair combed. And I remember one day he asked me, could he go outside? I said, if you let me comb your hair, you can go outside. So he left and went into the room. And I was sitting there waiting for him to bring the comb back. Well, while I was sitting there, I started smelling like a boiled egg, I thought. And I kept smelling it. And I got up. And I went towards the back bedroom and I passed by the bathroom. And my nephew had decided to get in my perm. <laughs>
the camera that we all know is because his mother is. His mother, Stephanie, who I understand was a wonderful, wonderful woman. He spoke to me about you before. And how he is, we're going to speak of him as he is here, because he is. I don't do a past tense, I'm sorry if you do. But he is here. And he is because you are. Raising him in the way that you raised him, to be respectful and honorable and loving and accepting, patient, except for video games, and kind and welcoming. All of those things, I am certain he learned from you and Auntie and some of those older cousins and all of that. I haven't met the whole entire family, but I do know that he comes from a wonderful, extremely strong blood. For his wife, Denise, I think y'all celebrated 20 years, 22, 22 years in 2021 of marriage. Most of us can't get past 20 months, 20 minutes <laughs> with our spouse, especially those of us who are in the age range of 40, 50-ish, something like that. We come from an era of, all right, this ain't working out, we out. We divorce him, we gone. So a lot of our peers have not been married for that long. Denise and Cameron, your relationship is an example to us all how to persevere, how to keep it going, even when it's difficult. His wife, Denise, stood by him and took care of him while he was going through his cancer ordeal. A lot of times, when we're going through something that's hard and that's difficult, we jump ship. It's very easy to walk out the door and walk away. We would be remiss if we did not honor Denise as being that wife that stood by him through the thick, through the thin, through the good, through the bad, and the difficult. The raising that Cameron received taught him how to be the father that he was to his children. And I didn't know everybody's names until today, but I didn't know that Cameron was crazy about them folks. He loved him some children. He loved his children. And I can tell by the way you speak of him that he was all the kind of father that we all knew that he was. And we appreciate all of you for sharing Cameron with the community. Bookhouse, MJQ, Old Ponce de Leon, the Japanese culture, we all appreciate you sharing him with us. And we are grateful that we have those memories. We wouldn't have those memories if it wasn't for you all sharing him with us. And we honor you for that. We speak his grandparents' names for that. We honor and we love and we support your whole family at this time. Mrs. Atkins, you ready, Mama? Let me give a shout out King Club.
for people that weren't able to be here. And um, they wanted me to read things on their behalf. I'll start off with the director of the epidemiology department at Fulton County Board of Health, Dr. Fazel Khan. Uh, he, in both crime and camera opinions, is a very generous, kind, humble man. And he was very supportive of Cameron during his, basically throughout his own career working at Fulton County Board of Health, very supportive of me, but especially once Cameron had been diagnosed with cancer, he made it possible for him to still continue to work in the capacity of which he would be serviced. And in, in, in return, Cameron had a lot of respect for Dr. Khan and always would check on him and let him know how he was doing. And when Dr. Khan recently had triple bypass surgery, he was even more supportive of Dr. Khan. And Dr. Khan has been very supportive of me since everything has happened. And uh, one of the things Dr. Khan always called him was a you know gentle giant. And I explained to him that in his social media accounts, that Cameron went by Kyoji Chi, which means literally little giant, but he translated it to mean as humble giant. And this is just one of the things he just wanted me to say when he wrote me back the other day. He said, good morning, Denise. Good to know that I was not wrong in my assessment of Cameron. He was indeed a very humble, polite, soft, kind-hearted person, very conscientious of work. And he wished for today to go very well in his own. So that was the first thing I wanted to say in the film. The second is from a very good friend of ours and the MJQ community, and probably others know him very well too. Adam Darby, also known as Black Sunshine for a few days. Um, we had known him, I would have to say, for like the last 20 years or so when we first met him. And Joe Muggs, when we first got into like the Atlanta dance music and rave culture. And he was one of the first people we met. Adam is currently in Nairobi, Kenya, with his significant other and his daughter. But he wanted to have a brief us to you. There are some people who just show up and decide that they are going to be, that you are going to be their parent, and your life is enriched for it. Cameron was one such person. When I first moved to Atlanta and was getting my feet wet in the dance scene, I was immediately drawn to this tall brother who moves too smooth for his size. <laughs> when I found out he was known as Warlock the Interstellar, I knew we were going to get along. Every time I saw him, whether out of the party, in front of the GameStop in Lennox Mall, or in Japan at Venice, he was a literal, a literal ray of sunshine that he couldn't help but shine from above was that height. I feel so blessed to have had him up at MJQ, and I can't even start to describe the magic that he brought to the greatest dragon con parties of all time. Thoughtful, comforting, intelligent, boyly presence that he was, an inspiration to us all. I love you forever. Yoji, another world for us tonight. I will not forget you. And that was from Adam. There's something I would like to read to you all that I wrote for Cameron. As many people know, yes, we've been married for 22 years, but I actually have known him for about 30. I met him. Ellen's mall and the arcade. <laughs> I was getting through having lost my father a couple months before and uh, was learning to drive and was learning Atlanta. So I went down to Lennox Mall and hung out to the arcade for a little while because I did like the video games. I just didn't really play that well outside of the arcade. And um, I actually met him playing Street Fighter 2. Um, he was shocked that one there was 
came out or woman in mind, but you can say that I actually did very well. I had been playing at a uh, University of Georgia right before I had to leave school, and so I was decent. And he didn't realize um, until I walked away that I was actually a girl. He just treated me as someone that could barely play. And that's kind of how our relationship started. Um, of course, it was like on and off, and he kind of fell first, but I didn't, wasn't sure. <laughs> but once we started dating again, before we got married, at this point in time, I was kind of getting into poetry writing and that sort of thing. So I wrote him this. It's called Love of My Life. Finally, you are here. Who are you? You are the love of my life. What makes you this? So many, many reasons. The moment I met you, I knew you were special. Gentle and shy, yet strong, were your eyes mesmerizing me. Handsome face with cool attitude blew me away. Skilled with many talents and intelligence, you intrigued me. Your hand reached down to mine, and at that point, you were mine, and I was yours. In body and soul, we connected. Something broke the link, and we separated, but our feelings didn't. Cross paths again with several roadblocks in the way. It didn't matter. My heart was yours, and yours mine. We gave up ourselves and our all to others, only to be taken advantage of, but it only made our link stronger. We found one another in our depths of darkness to pull each other out. Stepping into the light together, we became one. We are proof that love is everlasting through all situations and true love without compromise is the purest form of emotion. Together eternal, we move mountains, sail open waters, and travel through galaxies and dimensions. Why? Because you are the love of my life, all my life, and beyond this life. I love these high camera hands. And that was just the type of person that he was. He always had my back. He was my biggest cheerleader, my teacher. He taught me Anything I know about computers now is because of him, in all honesty. One of my first frustrating memories about him was first moving in with him and seeing his computer set up and seeing the ungodly amount of wires he just had tangled and shown <laughs> everywhere. And I was like, how do you know what everything goes to? And he's like, I just know. <laughs> and uh, he's he was still like that even after all these years. He tried, I tried to kind of, you know, help him out with that, but even now, it's gonna be hard to try to kind of untangle all the stuff that he's left. But to say, to see everyone here, I'm very thankful to know that he touched everyone's life in such a way that people want to honor him. It's like another friend of mine said um, when she notified me on Facebook, she didn't really know what to say. And I think this perfectly sums it up that Cameron didn't realize the, the miracle that he was because he was too close to this earth. And now that he is not on this earth, he could see the miracles that he caused for other people as he flies above. And that's truly how I feel. Cameron always felt that he wanted to help people. He wanted to be there for everyone. He wanted to be there for me. And even when he got diagnosed with cancer, he did started researching everything he possibly could so he would not be one of the few to not make it 
or be one of the ones to be forever afflicted with the different side effects and the troubles that come along sometimes with cancer therapy. When he found out that he was cancer free in September of 2021, he was very happy. And we had so many plans to do so many things. And I intend, I'm still trying to do as much as we planned. We wanted to go to Japan together. And I still plan to make that a reality in one way or the other. And I also wanted to, want to say that when he left this plane of existence, when he ascended, it was random. It was not because of his illness. It was not because of anything that plagued him. I guess the best way to describe him is this, this bright star that was hovering, air shining ever so bright, but somewhere in the background, there was this black hole just looming and moving closer and closer, and he did his best to try to stray away from it. When he, when he left this plane of existence, I know that he wanted to be here. And I equate it to a light switch. That when things were good, he was bright. When things weren't good, and you know how you try to like make a light switch or a light bulb stay on as long as possible. And then sometimes the fuse breaks. Once it was broken, it took him. And I just want everyone to know that as much as Cameron will try to be there for everyone, no matter what was going on with their lives, you know, even when he was feeling bad, he would try to have a kind word to say to someone. If someone else was going through something, he would try to reach out to them as much as possible. He was a very empathetic person who felt everything. He didn't even want to kill bugs and pests because he felt every life had a purpose. And I know his life had a purpose. And I just wish sometimes that I could have seen the flicker, but I do know that it is important for all of us to continue to support each other and to be there for one another. And if you see things that don't seem right, reach out, please reach out. Please try to offer some sort of support. And because you just never know that a little bit of support could be the one thing that keeps that person here a little while longer. Not to dwell on that, but I felt like it needed to be said. I'm thankful to his family, to his mother for creating such a beautiful person and allowing him to come into my life. I am blessed to have helped raise his daughter and his son, who unfortunately couldn't be here today due to COVID. But I know he's here in spirit. I'm watching right now. I'm blessed for his friends that I've met since I've known Cameron. You all have always treated me as one for that I truly appreciate it. And all that I ask that we all continue to support each other as we go forward, because I know, even right now, I know I feel him. And I feel, feel him all the time. I had sometimes wondered if I would dream, see him at some point. And it hasn't quite happened yet. But I know he's here with me, and he's here with all of us forever. And I don't know how much more I can say without this rambling, but I thank the Creator for allowing all of us to be here today to celebrate His life. 
a baby prayer for bringing him into my life because he was just a wonderful and amazing person. I love you very much, Cameron. Whether you recall Kyoji Chibi, Wallace Sanders Stiller, Cameron Hokage. Hokage, basically, the leader of the Ninja Village. And I feel like he was somewhat of a leader of all his friends in his village. And just know, just like that candle burning right there, that my love for you will never be any dimmer than that candle. And then I miss you very much, and then I know I will see you again. Mr. Willie A. Watkins and staff, I would like to say thank you. Denise, that was so, so beautiful. Mom, I want to say you had a beautiful son, and anything that we can do as Willie A. Watkins staff, please call us. We are here for you, Denise. Anytime you want to talk, call me. Like you've been calling me for the last two weeks, so keep calling me. I love that beautiful voice of yours. So at this time, we're going to be dismissing. We're going to go over into the fellowship hall, and we're going to have some fun up there. We're going to eat all that food. Okay? Thank you. One minute, please. One minute. Before we slide over the fellowship and uh, eat some good food, I would like to properly close out this uh, celebration of life. I also know that um, Cameron had a great respect for Native American culture. And um, I'm a Native Cherokee, and I, and I know that my grandmother used to say this. When you were born, you cried and the world rejoiced. Live your life so that when you die, the world cries and you choice. Denise brought up something um, very important, the support and the awareness of our loved ones. Just being aware and knowing what's going on. Even in our day to day, even though we're all busy, we all got stuff, we all got things going on. And there are people that we love sometimes that we don't know are going through something. So when you feel the inkling to shoot a text, call, pull up on somebody at their house, knock on the door, ring a bell, and give them a hug. You should do that. Don't skip the opportunity to connect with those that you love. In closing, I ask that everybody get into a position of prayer, meditation, um, whatever you refer to it as. And we're just going to connect real quick. Giving honor to Bessie and Quincy Mayla. Giving honor to Mr. and Mrs. Atkins for creating Cameron. Giving honor to his wife, Denise. Giving honor to his children, his aunts, nieces and nephews, and anyone created to, connected to him by blood. We give thanks. We thank you for the opportunity and the blessing of knowing him of being his friend, being a loved one, being a co-worker. We give thanks. We give thanks for the presence that he had in our lives and we give thanks for the impression that he laid upon us. We give thanks for the love that he shared, the extension of his kindness, the energy in his words, his overall disposition of being a gentle giant that moves so gracefully across MJQ floors many nights. We give thanks. 
We do things for bearing witness to the wonderful person that he is. And may he continue to live with all of us within our lives. And may we continue to have the strength and the memory and the acknowledgement to reach out to his family to make sure that they're okay. And give us the spiritual intuition to reach out to any of our loved ones to make sure that they're okay. Let this be a reminder to you that you do not exist in a bubble. We are all connected. And we love all of those who are connected to us. Be it one degree or six degrees. Thank you. And now, next door, there'll be the repast. There'll be a gathering of food and fellowship. We ask that you be as joyful as you can. Be as joyful as you can. Be as joyful as you can. This is a somber occasion, but we are rejoicing. This is a homegoing celebration. So keep that energy with you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you.